Hey there, this is James the Mutant Pixel Dark Nell, and today I wanted to talk about wood textures. Recently I've been working on some projects that required some wood texturing for my surfaces, but the problem is if you use bitmap images you have very realistic wood surfaces, but the problem the way that they apply to 3D surfaces, surfaces that have a lot of form and shape to them, is you lose a lot of that realism of the wood. I mean, when you look at a cutaway piece of wood, obviously, you have the rings in there, and when you wood texture something like that, you end up with all the stretching and pinching, and it never ends up looking very realistic. So one of the benefits that you get of using a procedural texture is you get the rings, but then the procedural is so regular and boring that it always ends up looking really fake. So I was working when I was working on my project, I thought it'd be interesting to sort of show you the technique that I use for increasing the realism of the procedural wood. Now, this tutorial isn't so much as a recipe for making realistic wood, but it's just a methodology and a way of thinking about creating procedural textures that I hope will help you in your texturing. So let's jump in. I'm going to be working in on this baby head here, one of my favorite objects to demonstrate on. And we're just going to jump into the shader tree here. And since this is a procedural texture, we need to open up the preview window. So I will just hit F8 to open up our preview and get that going. Uh, and then we're going to go in here and add our layer and we're going to go down to textures and we're going to go wood. So you see what's great about the wood texture is you get the rings. Let me get the projection axis correct here. So I want this projecting through my surface. And I, I want this to look like a rather large object. So one of the obvious things you're going to want to work on is let's adjust that ring scale. So see, you get that very realistic look to the rings, how it conforms to the three-dimensional surface. But otherwise, it's just a very boring and unconvincing texture. And you can go in here and you can tweak the waviness. Or you can add the grain. I personally like the look of having the grain turned all the way up. but you're still never going to get a very convincing wood just out of one layer of the procedural. So what sets a real wood texture apart from the procedural is it has lots of subtle variation. So once you can start introducing that subtle variation into the procedural, then you start to get a more realistic look. So the first thing I do is I just duplicate this existing layer. So we're going to right click on here, we're going to go to duplicate. And then I want to set the blending mode on this one to multiply. What it's going to do is it's going to multiply those two values together and it'll darken up the dark areas a lot more than it's going to darken the light areas. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start messing with the ring scale here. And you can see already that's adding some interesting variation here to my ring so that it doesn't end up looking quite so regular and unrealistic. It's adding some of that variation in there. So then we can go in here and maybe we can adjust the grain scale on the second layer here. Now I'm going to duplicate this first layer once again, select the bottom one, right click and we're going to duplicate and I'm going to drag this one to the top and this one I'm going to set to overlay. And what overlay does is it's going to take the dark areas and kind of multiply them, but then it's going to take the light areas and then it's going to screen them. The use basically like the screen uh, lightning mode on there. So anything that's 50% will basically disappear. And then again, we're going to adjust the ring scale here on this one. And maybe adjust that grain scale. Right there, with very minimal work, I've already increased the realism of this procedural texture exponentially. So I think one last thing that we could add here uh, is a bump map. So I'm going to take this layer again, and we can use Control-D 
to duplicate that, I'm just going to take that first layer and then I'm going to set that to surface shading and bump. And then if we go into the material here, so about 0.3 millimeters, I think is about right. Uh, and then you can adjust the, the roughness. I think the default is 40, which I think is a bit too strong uh, for the highlight there. Maybe if it's a polished wood, 40 would be okay. Uh, but if you're doing a bare wood, I usually increase this roughness value to about 60. And you can see that gives a fairly convincing wood texture and you get the benefits of having the rings on there so that it actually looks like it's carved out of a solid piece of wood. And you can continue layering textures on here if you want to continue to add subtle differences. So if I were to say just to add a noise texture, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to make the Y value something really big. So that way it'll give me streaks. And then I'm going to take this color and set it to something in the brown area. And I'm going to set this one to multiply. So that's going to continue to add some subtle variations inside of there to make it more interesting. And if you think some of these textures are getting a little dark, you can go in here and adjust some of your blending opacities down a little bit. All right, and there you go. So I hope you learn a little bit about layering procedural textures and changing blending modes to increase the realism of your surfaces. It's definitely something to play with and you can go in and you can adjust the ring colors, change some of these other values. Now I've found that the waviness, if you change the waviness too much between the layers, it starts to get a, real, a little bit noisy and it doesn't look very convincing. But if you stick to adjusting the ring scale and the graininess and then the grain scale, tweaking those values, you can get a pretty convincing look. So I hope you have fun, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.